guys, it's Lauren from Pink Bird Originals. I'm really sorry I haven't posted a video in like forever. I've just been super busy with um, in-person selling and comic cons. I think I've sold at a different comic con probably five weeks on the trot. It's been like incredibly crazy and hectic and awesome. And that's why I made this video. This video is going to be all about in-person selling at events like craft shows and comic cons. So if you're interested in that, uh, whether you're a veteran comic con seller, just looking to get some more inspiration, or you're just like starting out with in-person selling and you're looking for a few pointers on how to get going, then grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee and settle into this video because this is for you. Who are new to my channel my name is Lauren and I run an embroidery business from my bedroom and part of that business although I do most of my selling online uh, part of that business does involve going to craft fairs and comic cons and selling my products in person and in today's video we're going to be talking all about that so the main points I'm going to cover today are choosing what items to take with you uh, setting up your stall like how to set up your display and arrange your products, important things to take with you, so some things that you might forget, um, sales techniques, and lastly, anything else that I kind of think of while I'm rambling on through this video. So first point is choosing what products to take with you. Naturally, you're going to want to take all your best sellers and this is the right thing to do, but also don't forget that in-person events are a great way to trial new products or new product ideas to gauge people's interest, especially if you might purchase your products from manufacturer where there's a minimum order quantity. If you can bring along a sample with you or even like a photo of the prototype, you can use this to gauge people's interest in person to see whether or not that that new product is going to do well online. Sometimes it isn't even your best sellers that reel in the customers, but your most eye-catching products will. So aside from best selling products and new products, how do you gauge what products to bring with you to each event? Well, bear in mind that each convention usually has some kind of target audience and knowing your target audience will usually give you a good indication of what sort of people will be attending the event and then you can cater your products to suit the target audience's interests. For example, if you're going to a convention that's based around sci-fi, then you're going to want to bring things that are maybe more black, space themed and just generally have a kind of cyber sort of vibe. You're also going to want to bring with you a variety of products that have different kind of price points. Some people, when they go to these conventions, they're more just looking to look around and probably spend little but often at lots of different types of stores. Some people, on the other hand, are looking to spend big. So by having a range of product prices, you're kind of catering to everybody's budget. Sometimes when I'm attending an event, even if I only purchase one table, by the time you take in your travel costs, your food expenses, your hotel cost, it often costs me in excess of £700 to attend a convention. And if the only products I bring with me cost me £7, then I'd have to sell £107 products. I'm hoping that maths is right. <laughs> Before I can break even. Whereas if I brought a range of price products, so anything from £7 to say £70, uh, with a £70 item, I'd only have to sell 10 of those to break even. And so by having a variety of different price products, you'll break even more quickly than if you brought a bunch of small, low price products. This may seem really obvious to everyone, but it did take me three conventions to figure out. Now I sell jackets. And speaking of jackets, it's a really good idea to bring the most popular sizes. And this sort of applies to everything. By the time you've done maybe three or four conventions, you have a rough idea what are the most popular sizes and colours in your products. And so it's a better idea to focus on bringing the most popular items and selling more rather than bringing equal amounts 
of all of your inventory and finding that you sell out of the most popular things and you still don't sell out of the unpopular things whereas if you had brought more of the popular item the chances are you would have sold more that makes sense right this also means that if you're like me and you struggle to bring all of your inventory to shows because there isn't enough space in your car you can focus on optimizing the space taken up in your suitcases and anything else that carries your stock with you bring less of the less popular stuff and then more of the more popular stuff. Also, don't feel that you have to bring your entire inventory with you. Bringing your entire inventory and trying to set it up all on your display can sometimes make your stall a little bit overwhelming. People might not see as much of what you have to offer because there's just too many items on to focus on at once. Whereas if you bring a smaller selection, it's more likely that your audience will spot something on your stall that piques their interest and then continue to browse around the rest of your stall. And that brings us on to the next section of this video, which is stall setup and appearance. I am never happy with how my stall looks, ever. So this next section of the video might seem a little bit hypocritical, but picking up on our last point, having too many items in your display can leave the customer with nothing to sort of zone in on and they could just walk on by without really appreciating what you have to offer. To reduce the chances of this happening, try to keep product types grouped together and have the prices of each product clearly visible. From talking to other vendors selling at craft shows, I know that some people actually like to disguise their prices because it, they believe it gives an opportunity for the customer if they're interested in the product to engage with the shop vendor. And in doing so, the shop vendor can then go on to explain more about their products and then start to sell their products to the customer. I try this. I like to think of myself as some kind of cheeky, smooth salesperson. And it didn't really work for me because a lot of customers just didn't respond well to it. They were too shy to ask for the price and then they just sort of ended up walking on past the stall without engaging at all. So from that experience, I personally like to keep my prices clearly visible. Next, when thinking about your display, you're going to want to pick colors that complement your brand or that help your products really stand out. After you've chosen colors that complement your products and brand, the next thing that I found very helpful is introducing layers to your stall. What I've noticed is when customers come to walk past your table, their sights are usually transfixed on the edge of the table. So unless you've got something right at the front of your table that is eye-catching and grabs their attention, they usually walk on by without kind of looking around at everything else. So if you have something at the front of your table that is really eye-catching, their vision then sort of flows around the stall. And if you have layers, it enables you to display more on your table rather than having everything lying flat and creating a cluttered sort of space. By having layers, you can create order, you can group your products together, and it just constructs a more professional appearance. So now that you've established what stock to take with you and how to display it on your stall, let's talk about what other important things you can take with you that you might often forget. These things I class as my essentials in case of display emergencies. One thing I like to do is I've got a pencil case and I keep all of my emergency supplies in the pencil case. And no matter what, that pencil case never leaves my travel suitcase. And in this pouch, you can include useful things like string, drawing pins, cello tape, scissors, a pen, two pens actually in case the first pen runs out, uh, a notepad, and then have I already said scissors? Scissors are really important. The amount of times that we have been on our stall and we have needed a scissors either to cut something off the display, to cut a tag off clothes, is scissors are just really essential. And lastly, a screwdriver, which again, screwdrivers are very handy, especially if you've got anything on your stall that uses batteries. It's always good to have some way of accessing those batteries should they run out. Another really useful thing to bring with you is something to keep track of your sales. So to help you better understand what sells well in what size, 
just take a notebook to jot down what you're selling. It also helps you keep a track of um, how much money you are exchanging. So at the end of the show, when you're adding up your figures, you can see whether or not the items you've sold matches with the money you have physically taken from the show. And this will help you keep better track of your inventory as well. So for the next show, you can replenish the items that have sold in the previous show. Then even though we live in a largely cashless society now, it is still a good idea to bring some sort of cash float with you just in case you do get a cash sale and for instance somebody pays with a 20 and you're selling them a £4 item and then you've got to give them £16 change. And if your reaction to that statement is, what? Who pays with cash anymore? Uh, you're completely right. Not many people do pay with cash anymore. In fact, I'd say at my last conventions, 90% of my transactions were made using uh, contactless credit cards. And so it's also a very good idea to invest in some kind of contactless card reader for you to take card payments at your store. And so maximize the potential amount of sales you can get that day. In fact, card readers can often be quite temperamental, so I'd also recommend getting two card readers just in case one fails. You don't want the customer hanging around waiting for you to restart that particular card reader when they could just use your backup card reader. And then what happens if you forget to charge your card readers or your phone overnight? It's much more likely than you think. And so it's also a good idea to bring some sort of heavy duty battery pack so you can charge up your electronics just in case you forget to do it before you leave. Having an additional power block or battery is really important in case of emergencies. And then you'll also need a way for people to find you outside of the convention, especially if you're hoping to acquire more online sales. So bring with you some sort of business card that has your social media platforms and your selling platforms very clearly marked on your business card. And usually I like to include a business card with every sale, so just in case when they get home and they're looking at the product, they can contact you if they have any issues with that product or hopefully if they wanna buy more stuff from you. Next, we're gonna talk about sales techniques. And let's be real, there is nothing worse than a pushy salesman or somebody who really intensely stares at you when you walk around their stall and blink in just waiting for you to make eye contact. It's disconcerting and it puts people off. You don't have to engage with every person who comes up to your stall and immediately start the hard sale. Sometimes just saying hello and offering them a smile is enough for them to know that you're approachable and easy to engage with in case they have any further questions. And if you can, standing behind your stall is more beneficial to sit in as it puts you on an equal level with the customer and it creates an easier dynamic for you to engage. At Comic Cons in particular, I find it's very easy to strike up a conversation with new people. Usually a lot of people are in fancy dress and have spent absolute hours working on their cosplays. By paying them a compliment or asking them questions and just generally acknowledging the effort that they've put into their costumes, it often leads to a longer conversation and gives you an opportunity to explain your craft to them as well. And by having these conversations, it makes you more memorable to that person. So even if they don't purchase something there and then, having these conversations can still be effective if you're selling a skill or product that is still available outside of the convention. So long as the conversation is pleasant and informative, they'll be more likely to remember you later on and could possibly reach out to you online. And also people who have a pleasant experience at your stall are more likely to come back with their friends and those friends could be turned into potential customers. And lastly, do deals. Everyone loves a bargain and by having like um, buy one get one free or three for two offers on your stall, it makes for a great way to upsell. In the anything else section of this video, when I was jotting down notes at the start, this was actually the smallest part, but as I've sort of gone on, this has actually become the longest. And these points are all the other important things surrounding conventions that you should really keep in mind um, before or during the big days. Comic cons can be very busy and often you don't get a lot of time to sort of leave your stall during the event. So I'd say the top priority is to remember to bring food and water before the convention opens. Get to Tesco's, get that meal deal and get two bottles of water and set yourself up for the day so you don't have to leave your stall unattended when the show is open to the general public. Next, 
If you can, because it is a big, big money saver, book your hotel as far in advance as you can. And also pay extra for a free cancellation. So um, story time, I'll be selling at Liverpool Comic Con in May. I knew I was going to be selling at this event since late last year. I'm talking maybe November time. But for some reason, I really dropped the ball and I didn't book my hotel room. In November, I remember like briefly looking around for hotels in Liverpool near the convention hall and they were about £172 for two nights, which was great. Reasonable price, right in the city centre. Didn't have far to travel between the hotel and the Comic Con. It was going to be perfect. And I didn't book it. And I don't know why. Because a few weeks later, they announced that on the same weekend as the Comic Con, Liverpool football team are playing at home. And hotel prices immediately shot from a reasonable £172 to £420 for two nights. It's ended up now we're actually staying about 40 minutes outside of Liverpool and we're going to have to travel back and forth on the Friday for setup, on the Saturday to actually trade at the event and on the Sunday, which is not great because conventions are really hectic, heavy, draining events and you need all the sleep you can get. You don't really want to have to be getting up 40 minutes earlier in the morning to travel if you can help it. So yeah, seriously, book hotels as far in advance as you can and look for those free cancellation fees. I know sometimes they cost a little bit more, but it's worth having it just in case your circumstances change and you can no longer attend the event. You will get your money back. So long as you don't cancel like three days before you're due to stay at the hotel or something. And like I already said, comic cons can be very hectic and very draining. Sometimes if there's a lot of people standing around your stall all waiting to be served, it can get overwhelming and a little bit scary. So it's important to remember it's okay to ask people to wait if your stall is busy. You can only serve one person at a time and it does get very stressful if there's like two or three other people hanging around waiting to buy something. But if you just politely acknowledge that they're there and tell them that you'll be with them soon, it'll just take a load of pressure off you. And lastly, don't be drawn into reserving stock without some kind of deposit or guarantee that the customer will return for it. It's not fair on you. Very often, if a customer sees something they like, but they aren't 100% committed to buying it yet, but equally, they don't want to lose that product to somebody else, they'll ask you to keep that item behind the counter for them. Don't be fooled into doing this. They never come back for it. And you'll just be holding back a product that you could have sold on to somebody else. But you'll learn and experience all of this as you start attending events and seeing these things for yourself firsthand. And I think I'm done preaching for the day. I'm sure you'll go on to have wonderful experiences selling in person. And if this is your first time selling at an event, then I really hope this video has helped you feel more prepared. Or if you're watching this video and you are a veteran Comic Con vendor, then leave all of your hints and tips down in the comment section below. And then maybe new sellers watching this video can draw on your wisdom. Thank you all for watching my video. Again, I'm sorry it's been like ages since I uploaded something. Um, I do have a few new videos planned coming up uh, relevant to embroidery. That's going to be more videos on digitizing. Um, video on metallic threads and how to use it and I am going to be making ball hats for summer on the HCU which is my new embroidery machine loaned to me from Midwest Machinery. So if you'd like to see more of my content please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!